In this video, we are going to explore the basic definition of work, and then we will begin to explore the details of forces that do positive work on objects and forces that do negative work on objects. Now, the definition of work that I find most useful in developing a conceptual understanding of work is that work is the energy required to move an object a certain distance. Now in order to move an object a distance, you have to apply a force to that object, assuming that this object is not already traveling at constant velocity. And now this force has to act on this object over some distance. So remember, this force is going to cause this object to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Now we can relate the work required to move an object to the force and the distance over which that force acts. And we often express this mathematically as work equals the force acting on an object over the distance that that force acts. Now keep in mind that both force and distance or displacement are both vector quantities. They have magnitude and direction. But what's very interesting is when we get this new term by multiplying out the force and displacement vectors, we get a new term called the scalar quantity. Work does not have direction. It just has magnitude. Now if you were to explore this definition in more detail, you would learn that work is really calculated by using the dot product of the force and displacement vectors. Because only when the force acts in the direction that the object moves, does the force do work on the object. So for the purposes of this video, we are only going to consider the force acting in the same direction it causes the object to move, so that we can say that work equals force times the distance over which that force is applied to the object. Now before we go any further, let's just talk about the units used to measure work. Now if you remember, force is measured in units of newtons, and distance or displacement is measured in units of meters. But the unit of a newton has base units of the kilogram meter per second squared. And when we multiply that out by a meter, we get base units of kilogram meters squared per second squared. And we give these base units a special name. We call these base units a joule. And we abbreviate the joule with a capital J. So one way to make sense of these base units of the joule is to think of the joule as the energy required to apply a one newton force to an object over a distance of one meter. So now let's just do a basic problem. So in this basic work problem, we're going to try to figure out how much energy is required to increase the velocity of this car. And if we assume that the velocity of this car starts out at zero meters per second, so the car starts from rest, and we apply a 2,000 newton force to this car, so this will be a 2,000 newton force directed in the positive x direction, and remember that this is a vector quantity. And if you remember from Newton's second law, forces cause objects to accelerate in the direction of the net external force. And if this 2,000 newton force causes this car to reach a final velocity of 20 meters per second over a distance or a total displacement, we'll call it d, of 100 meters, the question is how much work does this force do on this car as it acts over this distance? To determine the answer, we're going to use our basic definition of work, which says that work equals the force over the distance which this force acts. And in this case, the force is going to equal 2,000 newtons. And this force acts in the same direction that this car is displaced or moved. And so we're going to multiply it by 100 meters and 2,000 newtons times 100 meters works out to be 200,000 newton meters. And we said that a newton meter was a unit of a joule, so 200,000 joules of energy is required to increase the velocity of this car. So 200,000 joules of energy are required to increase the velocity of this car. Another way to think about that is that a 2,000 newton force transfers 200,000 joules of energy to this car when it's applied in the same direction in over a distance of 100 meters. Now one thing to take note of from this problem, notice that the force vector pointed in this direction and the displacement vector pointed in the same direction. So when the force acts in the same direction that the object is displaced, the work is going to be greater than zero. And so sometimes we say we do positive work on this object. So the force did positive work. So when you do positive work on an object, you increase the velocity of the object. And what we'll soon discover is that when you increase the velocity of an object, you increase the kinetic energy of an object as well. So in this last example, what I'd like to take a look at is what it means to do negative work on an object. So we're going to do the previous problem in reverse. We're going to have a car which initially starts with a velocity of 20 meters per second. And in this case, we want to apply a force to this car which will bring this car to a stop to a rest. So if you remember from Newton's second law of motion, in order to slow down an object, we're going to have to apply a force in the opposite direction of this car's motion. Now remember, 
Newton's second law says that forces cause objects to accelerate in the direction of the net external force. So this force is going to be directed in the opposite direction of this car's velocity. And if you remember, when the acceleration and velocity vectors point in opposite directions, the object's going to slow down. Now if we apply a 2,000 Newton force to this car, and in this case, this will be a negative 2,000 Newton force because it's in the opposite direction of this object's motion. If we assume that this is the positive x direction over here and this is the negative x direction, this force has to act in the negative x direction. Now, if this this force is applied over a total distance or a total displacement of 100 meters and take note that this is a displacement of a positive 100 meters because this car is still traveling in the positive x direction. Our question now becomes how much energy does this force transfer to this car as it slows it down over a distance of 100 meters. So we're going to have to use our definition of work which says that work equals the force times the distance over which the force acts. Now in this case this is going to be a negative 2,000 Newton force acting over a distance of a positive 100 meters. So in this case, negative 2,000 Newtons times 100 meters works out to be negative 200,000 Newton meters. And we previously said that a Newton meter was a unit of a joule. So in this case, negative 2,000 joules of energy is required to bring this car to a stop over a distance of 100 meters. Or another way to think about that is, negative 2,000 newtons of force is required to slow this car down over a distance of 100 newtons. So this negative 2,000 newton force transfers negative 200,000 joules of energy to this car as it slows it down over a distance of 100 meters. And so another general principle that you'll see is when the force vector points in the opposite direction of the displacement vector, what you'll see is that the work is going to be less than zero. And so we often say that the force does negative work on the car. And one of the things that you'll soon learn is that when a force does negative work on an object, it slows the object down. It decreases the object's velocity, which also decreases the object's kinetic energy.